All right, the last tool in our toolbar that I want to go over is the Adjustment Brush tool. We can get there by clicking the Adjustment Brush button right here, the Tools menu, Adjustment Brush, or we can get there by hitting K, the hotkey, within any module in Lightroom. So let's hit K to open up our dialog box right here. Now, you're going to see a lot of things that are very similar to the Gradient Filter tool because a lot of it is very similar. It's identical up until this last portion right here where you're actually controlling uh, brush setting options. And I'm going to shrink the size of this so it's not so distracting as it shows up. All right, so basically how this works is it's going to work very similarly to the graduated filter tool, except instead of drawing in a filter from one side across, you're going to be basically painting in where you want the effect to appear. This makes this tool extremely powerful for little local area adjustments as well as making uh, certain areas pop. Uh, you can even use it for skin corrections and softening. Um, you can use it for a lot of different cool things. And we're going to show you guys how to use it for all those things, but for now let's just go over kind of how it works. So similar to the graduate filters, we're going to set in our whatever develop settings that we want here. We can also use the different presets that come with it or the presets that we've set ourselves or we can save our own preset. Now the area that differs is down here under your brush settings. So under brush settings we have the brush size which is really simple to understand. It's just affecting the actual size of the brush. You can adjust the size by using your left and right brackets, using the slider as well as using the mouse wheel. So you're going to adjust to a kind of a good size depending on what you're trying to do. If I'm trying to make an adjustment to the sky, I'd probably keep it around 23, 24. You don't want it to be too large because it is going to affect areas around it. The next option we have down here is the feather. And the feather basically controls, if you look at the, uh, the little circle that you see, the inner circle is, it's your size essentially. Uh, and it's going to be where the uh, effect is the most strong. The outer circle is where the feather stops, where the feather adjustment is ending. So it's basically going to feather out to that point. So if I adjust this feather slider in and out, you're going to see that feather line is going to increase in size. It's basically going to make it so that the edge isn't going to be as strong. So if I show you guys an example, this is with a, a full feathering. And then if I hit a new brush, and then we reduce the feather on this one, this is no feather. So you can see that hard edge when I don't use uh, the feathering effect. So it's, it's usually good to have feathering up pretty high because you don't want it to be a super noticeable effect like that. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo both of those. All right, so we'll leave feather at 100. The next option that we have is the flow. And basically what the flow is is the strength of the brush. Um, now flow and density are kind of, uh, they might seem kind of like they're similar, but they're actually pretty different. Flow is related to the strength of the brush, but I can sit there and I can paint over an area even though flow is set to 50% right now. That just means I'm painting in at 50% of the strength. But I can paint in that same area again, and it's still going to get darker and darker and darker. Density is affecting, oops, sorry. Density is affecting how much, how strong the effect can get in any one particular area. So if I adjust density down to 50, then the strongest that this brush could get in this one area, regardless of how many times I go over this area, is up to 50% of that, of that total strength. Okay, so density affects the overall strength of that area. Flow is affecting how quickly the brush is basically laying down the effect. All right, so I'm going to undo both of those again by hitting Control Z. I have to actually undo multiple times, so let me just hit reset to get us back to where we were. All right, now the next option we have is this auto mask option. So actually, this is the last option that we have is the auto mask. Uh, so auto mask is basically going to make it so if we want to say darken the sky without affecting the mountain. I can select auto mask and Lightroom's going to basically try and guess what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to say as long as I draw kind of slow and I go along with the edge of the mountain, let me actually turn up the flow and the, mat, the density so you can actually see what I'm doing. As long as I kind of draw slowly and along with this edge of the mountain, Lightroom's going to try and guess basically what I'm trying to do and it's going to kind of paint in this effect. Now you'll notice that this effect can cause, this auto mask feature can cause some strange issues. If I zoom in on this particular area you're going to see a lot of uh, kind of little pixelation and stuff right here and you'll also see lines along the uh, along the mountain where basically it's masking. It's a very apparent mask basically. So you probably want to use this feature sparingly. I've seen it used uh, on some of our images and it works really well. On other ones it doesn't work very well. So just kind of be careful. I would typically default it as off so you don't automatically just kind of do a bunch of painting and then find out later that you've got edges and weird pixelation on your images. Now the other option we have is we have uh, we can set to another brush so we can have two default brush settings. So if you want to have you know two different sizes and feathering and flows and all that you can set that to A, brush A and brush B. 
And then to get rid of an effect anywhere we want it, we can switch to erase mode, but the easiest way to do that is actually just to hold alt. So if I hold alt, it's going to automatically bring up erase. I can have I can adjust my uh my size by uh, just pulling the slider up and down as I also use my mouse wheel. Keep in mind that I'm holding alt this entire time. If I let go of alt, it goes back to brush mode. So I'm going to hold alt whenever I want to just remove the effect from a certain area. And then let me show you guys how to make adjustments to multiple brushes. I really quickly I'm going to paint over a bunch of areas with some different brushes. We'll do that one area. I'm going to hit new, create a new brush. This time we'll adjust brightness in this area. This is all just illustrative, by the way, if you can't tell. Obviously, I would not do this to this image. I'm going to hit new again. We're going to create a saturation one right there and put that in right here. Okay, so I've created three different adjustment brushes over this image. If I want to remove any of them, it's going to work the same way as it did with graduate filters. I can select this one and just say delete by hitting the delete button. If I want to make adjustments to it, I can select it. I can paint out what areas I don't want to affect. So let's say it's, I got too much of the mountain, so I'm just going to paint underneath the mountain to kind of remove it. And keep in mind you have your erase options right here too. So it's the same exact options that we have for our brush as far as the feather and the flow. So I'm going to erase a little bit out, and then I'm going to make an adjustment to just kind of reduce the overall strength of it. So I'm going to bring the strength down a little bit, kind of make it not so powerful to affect. A little bit more. There we go. And for this brush, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it, and I'm going to continue painting actually throughout the rest of my poppies right here. And then I'm going to kind of tone it down just a tiny bit. So we'll just bring the exposure up a little bit, and then bring the saturation back a tiny bit, and the contrast back a little bit. All right, guys, so there's some really cool features that we're going to go over. All right, guys, so in later tours, we're going to teach you guys some really cool ways of, of using the adjustment brush for fixing images, also for artistic edits, for pretty much everything. So it's a really powerful tool. You guys play around with it. I'm going to reset this now, and then we can move on to our next tutorial.